Fantastic. All right. I, I, I will have to, um, if um, my piano tuner is due to come around any second, okay. all I have to do is go downstairs and let him in. Um, that will take me about 30 seconds. If, if that happens, will you excuse me? I'll just have to go downstairs. And, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm absolutely. Um, how, long, how much of your time do I have? Uh, you have 20 minutes. All right. Sean, let me just say, I discovered your music back in high school. I'm in my 30s now, and it's been yeah. at least 15, minute, 15 years I've been listening to you, and so I'm, I'm so thankful to have this little opportunity to talk with you. Excellent. Good. Well, um, sure. You have such a diverse resume from, you know, all over the place, from really, you know, prog, experimental to very commercial stuff. But how do you see yourself? Are you a prog rock guy in your own head or just a, a guy who likes to do whatever comes out of your musical soul? I am a singer-songwriter, basically. <laughs> and what, what happens is when I write a song, depending on where that song's home is, it will get treated in a different way. Um, for instance, the song that I wrote, in King Crimson, one of the songs that I wrote, almost completely in Crimson was the first part of Starless. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is performed. For the first three minutes, that's my composition. Then it goes into, into all hell breaking loose, and that's the other guy's contribution. But uh, if you look at what I contributed to bands, um, that's pretty much what I brought, which is a three, four-minute song, which then got processed by the band, it got homogenized, and it got... Uh, it got pasteurized and suddenly it, it ended up as something completely different. What you get with a, a John Burton solo album is, is the stuff in its pure form. <laughs> and pretty much with Asia, it's, just, it's the pure form yeah. as well. Last year, I know you guys in Asia released Om Omega, which had some yeah. great yeah. reviews, as good as the stuff you were doing when you first got together so long ago. Does that surprise yeah. you any that you still have listeners, there's still fans, that people still love this music 20 years on? Um, does it surprise me? No, I know there's a, there's a, a few people out there because <laughs> they come onto my website and they're very, very seriously, seriously loyal. And, uh, and they love the band Asia and they always have done. Um, they like, they've only liked it when it's been in its original form. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I, so I, but I, I'm well aware of them, and I see these guys on the road, you know, when we go out and do a show, I actually meet the people that I've been talking to for the last 20 years online, and uh, it, it's quite extraordinary, you know, they, they are very, very loyal. So I, I, I think, judging by the reaction so far, that they like what I've done this time around with the solo album. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, for them, it's a, it's, um, it's a great variation on, on what I do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's much more guitar based than, than Asia. Asia is normally the songs come from the keyboard yes. version. Keyboard keyboard is my first instrument and if I'm left to my own devices I will sit at home in my sleepy little town in my front room with my piano and I will write dreary ballads until the stars <laughs> come <laughs> Dreary ballads and folk scenes. And what has to happen with me is I have to get picked up out of my dreary little front room and taken to Los Angeles and dropped into a studio with a guy who drinks too much coffee. And then, due to the outside influences and the kind of edgy atmosphere that I'm in, plus this guy drinking gallons of coffee and playing guitar, not playing keyboards, you end up with what I've, what I've got put up recently, which is Raising Captivity. Mm -hmm. Well, I just got the solo album the other day, matter of fact. You have yeah. quite an array of guest musicians on this, you know, from all your uh, alumni, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. Was that yeah. intended, or was it just sort of an organic thing as you were creating the album? No, it was intended. It was always intended that when Billy and I just decided to work together, that we would do 90% of the record. But most of the instruments on that record are myself and Billy, and I do all the singing, and he plays all the drums, and mm -hmm. we play the bass, and he plays the guitar. We knew exactly which spots we were going to put each artist into, each each guest artist. For instance, I had already knew that Steve Hackett, I wanted Steve Hackett to play the solo on Goodbye Elsinore. I already knew that I wanted Mick Box to play the, the solo on New Star Rising. I knew that I wanted Robert Fripp on there somewhere, I didn't know where. Um, but all of the guys 
apart from Billy's friends, which mm. were Steve Morse and Tony Kay, everyone else had their part set up before I left England. Did you, uh, you'll have to excuse me, John, if I'm not completely familiar with your background. Had, have you worked with Billy Sherwood before? No. Uh, how was well, yeah, we worked together. We worked together on various um, compilation albums, uh, tribute oh. albums, which uh, I would do. I do it just for charity and for fun, because it's the easiest thing in the world for me to sing a Beatles tune. It's the easiest thing in the world for me to sing a, a Queen tune, um, and it's things that I love doing. You know, it doesn't take me very long, and so I, and I give the money to charity. So I don't say that this is a career move. It's not so. Billy and I have worked together for the last five years on these things, and so I knew what he brought to the party. I knew that he was very quick, I knew he was incredibly musical, and that he was a great engineer, yeah. and that he played great guitar. Yeah. So, he had all the credentials. Yeah, well, I know him through his work with Yes, I think a yeah. lot of us do. How do you two work together? Do you Are you writing the songs and he's making the music, as you've been hinting at, or uh, is it yeah. like you're both writing, or...? We're writing and arranging simultaneously. That's what we're doing in the studio. I've got the chords and the melody on, uh, that I've written out, and I've got, you, I've got maybe the beginnings of the lyrics, maybe got two verses, two or three verses, where I've got the chorus of the and I sit down and I play that, and then we'll start to make a map. It's exactly the same as like, the way I work with Jeff Downs. Mm -hmm. We make a map, and it tells you where the verse is. And that, with with mm -hmm. Pro Tools now, it means you can you can take the verse, you can expand it, you can add another line here, you can take away a line there, put the chorus here, then you can move the bridge around. It, it's all movable. And that's the way most most of us work on, uh, when there's only two people. Yeah. Because it means you can put down a drum track, you can then think, oh, what kind of bass do they need for this? You can analyze everything right. as it goes on, right. but it still sounds like a band. Well, if you get guys who are good enough, it's a <laughs> band. Which uh, is what Reds in Captivity does, it sounds like, it sounds like four guys playing in the studio. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, it doesn't sound like those uh, the put together things where every note is analyzed. It doesn't sound like that at all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it rather relies on the fact that the two guys who are doing it know what they're doing. <laughs> well, you have, both of you have such extensive careers. And yeah, we do. Uh, neither of us drink, which helps a lot. <laughs> um, do you um, see this, I mean, I. You've done a few solo albums in the midst of all these bands that you've worked with. Do you see this particular album as having a particular place in the timeline of your solo albums? Like, oh yes, my last album had this attitude and now I've moved here. Does it reflect a certain place in your life or your work? Or? Yeah, it's, it's um, all of my records for the last 30 years, all of them have been autobiographical. They all tell the story of my of my life to date, to date, to now. And so, really what you heard from Asia in 1982 mm -hmm. was this, when I first started writing in the first person, and I said, I, the, I know I'm meant to be good to you. Um, all the songs certainly take on the first person. It's so, I'm talking from personal experience rather than looking at someone else's life. So that was a big jump for me, but it worked. A lot of people liked that, and they went out and bought the record. So, and I also had a lot of stuff, I knew that I had a lot of stuff to give. I had a lot of stuff stored up that had to go somewhere. So, um, the moment I started pouring it out, the Asia, I couldn't stop it. So ever since then, it's been a constant stream of my sort of, uh, my insane outpourings in my head. <laughs> so, um, well, I've got a little bit of my heart thrown in. <laughs> And maybe a little bit from my hips too. But, uh, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the main gist of it is that it's, um, it's most well, I'm reading out of my, my journal, my diary. It's what's happened to me. Okay. Um, and it's the same with this one, the Rose and Captivity. I go back as far as my childhood in Rose and Captivity and all points in between. So it's just like an update of my life so far. So yes, it's very pleasant. <laughs> Well, I want to make. I just want to speak about Asia for a minute because that I actually discovered you when I picked up the second Asia album, um, oh, yeah. that, which I, I, remains my favorite. I know it's the first one was yeah. the breakthrough, but I like no, the second absolutely. better. 
Uh, you, you're right on it there. You are, you're, you're speaking to the converted. <laughs> I think that Asia, with, because of the way we started out all coming from different bands that would have been kind of mega in their own way. Yes, yes. We sounded like that product and the record company treated it in that way that they saw us as a super band who everybody could be virtuoso and stuff. Actually, we were just like a, a, a British prog pop yeah. rock band. Yes. You know. And by the second album, we found that we, we could do that. We, we were allowed to do that. We didn't have to bring in ELP's gongs. We didn't have to bring in King Crimson's moodiness. We, we didn't have to bring in Yes's quirkiness. We, we could just be ourselves. Yeah. And so I think the other second album is much, but streets ahead of the first album. Yeah. And the I'll first album had a couple of big hits on it. Yeah. Ooh, who is this? Excuse me, one second. Hello? Are oh, you outside the door? I'll, I'll come and... I'll come and let you in. One second. I'm just uh, upstairs doing an interview, but right. So, yes, I'll come and let you in. All right, one sec. Fine. Tuna, tuna. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. The uh, piano is a cent- an essential part of my equipment, you know. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Hey, here we go. Hey, don't worry right. about it. As it is, right. you can see, I've, Thank got you a, very much. Yeah. I've got a baby grand right next to me, too, so I'm so oh, yeah. <laughs> Um Well, I won't keep you too much longer. Um, okay. I just want to know, this is reaching back into the timeline. How does it compare playing with Steve and Jeff and Carl now versus when you were thrown together by the record label as the super group? Oh, well, we were actually thrown together. We came together fairly organically, but... Um, it's much better now. The the band is ten times better on stage than it was, and we work much better as a unit than we did in nineteen eighty two, eighty three. We um, I think we've all matured a bit. We um, we certainly have a lot more patience with each other, and a lot more tolerance. Um, but the best, the main thing is that we're actually better as musicians, and we um, we work together much better on stage. Uh-huh. That's very satisfying. There's also, I think, a little bit of uh, less commercial pressure. Yeah, yeah, there are, certainly. The way the record industry is now, oh, yeah. um, there is virtually no commercial pressure. We, we, we're not going to see you uh, marching around in a, a safari outfit on MTV videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I don't think so. I, I don't think they're not going to be. Also, a hitchhike with the Amish. Uh, yes. Uh, no. <laughs> John, I know uh, Steve Howe and Jeff Downs have been working with Asia. I'm sorry, not Asia. Uh, yes, the Reunited yes. yes now, and they're on yes. tour. And I know you were touring with, you know, Wenton Downs. Um, is their stuff, how's that affecting your tour schedule? Yeah, we just have to be aware of each other, that's all. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it, I don't think it threatens Asia that Jeff and, and Steve are with, are with yes any more than it threatens than I threaten Asia by going out on tour with Eddie Jobson as UK oh, yeah. which I which I will be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't threaten Asia's position. Asia is the mothership. But, you know, we, we go off and do other stuff and we come back to Asia that's it. Uh-huh. Um unless uh, something has changed, I don't know. Carl yeah. goes off and does his solo tours. Yeah, yeah I yeah. And I understand. I even yeah. did a gig with the LP last year. Yes. But uh, I don't think that threatens Asia either. <laughs> if, you, if you know the guys, you know that they take Asia very seriously. Yeah. And, you know. So the way you're talking, can I um, uh, guess that Asia, the reunited Asia, has much more to say? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I think we'll be around for the foreseeable future. <laughs> I mean, you're talking to a guy who lives one day at a time. But <laughs> well, I, know. I could... I can quite confidently say we'll be around all of next year because it's our 30th anniversary and we'll be doing something special for that. That's right, that's right. I haven't done the math. John, any uh, solo touring for the album? Any special things you're doing with that? I mean, you if, can make... If you'd asked me that question a month ago, I'd have said no. <laughs> no, no, not a prayer, not a chance. Because I'd just come back from three months on the road. Mm. But I knew this would happen. I knew that when, when my manager called up and said, hey, do you want to go out on the road and support this album? I said, no. And then a month later, I'd been at home for a month and I'd been sleeping in my own bed and I'd been making cups of tea in my own kitchen for a month. And I'm thinking, 
you one more question um, then I'll let you yeah. take care of your piano um, do you have a favorite album from your career or something that's a very personal album to you when you look back mm, yeah I can I could, I'd have to narrow it down to maybe two or three alright that's alright I, I think I'd have to say I'd have to say it would be the, the second Asia record I think it would have to be Alpha I think it would have to be um, Battle Lines uh -huh. for my record in 1990 in Los Angeles. And I'd have to say Red from Kim Kim Kim. So right. all, for me, all, all milestones. Excellent. Uh, yeah, Red definitely is a well, well received King Crimson album. Yeah. John, I'm going to let you go now and take care of your business. Thank you very much. Like I said, I've been hey, listening to you. Pleasure. For 15 years, it's an absolute honor to get to speak to you. I, Thank you very much, Andrew. That means a lot to me. Thank you, sir. You have a good day, and rock on. God bless you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. I have to say a very special thanks to Mike, the Big Cheese, Catricola, the host of Heavy Metal Mayhem, an incredibly popular show here on Blog Talk Radio. He is solely responsible for for making this interview happen. Uh, he offered this interview to me because he didn't feel John worked on his show or worked with his um, focus on heavy metal. And uh, so this show is it would not have happened without him. And I know for a fact he's been patiently waiting to hear this interview.